Hello and welcome back and today we want to look at the performance of the TS253D. Now in today's video we have got a few things we're going to touch on. We're going to be utilizing one of the brand new QM2 upgrade cards inside this brand new QNAP NAS and we're going to be looking at standard Seagate Ironwolf NAS hard drive performance. Then we're going to be looking at the performance of NVMe SSDs inside this device and then finally we're going to be combining them for our level of high storage utilizing those hard drives and an area of NVMe SSD cache and all of this over 10 GBE. Now you may have noticed the sound is a little bit echoey I'm not recording in the usual areas so I do apologize in advance with that slight bit of echo if there's a slight church background there don't worry nothing's changed but let's have a look at the NAS so this is the 253D it's an Intel Celeron quad core processor NAS uh, and that is a 2.0 gigahertz um, frequency that can be clocked up to 2.7 per core. The unit also arrives with 4 gig of DDR4 memory and we're recording on a Windows 10 laptop. I am using OBS so there may be the odd performance dip at the higher points of AJA and Blackmagic testing. So we've got our two Seagate Ironwolf hard drives inside. These are 12 TB hard drives as well so they're 7200 rpm 256 megabyte cache and they're in a raid one environment we've already created our storage area and without further ado just to give you a nice base level of what we're going to be doing let's open up aja and as you can see here there's only the c drive that's my local ssd so the first thing we want to do is create a mapped network drive in order to create a mapped network drive go into the qfinder pro application find your nas on the local area network and then scroll down to map network drive any folders that you've created that are shared folders will appear here let's go for the public folder here we're going to map that network drive and we're rather unimaginatively going to give it the letter t now our mapped network drive has been assigned we can now move over and perform the aja speed test so right now we can see that the network drive has still not been recognized but it has been assigned to the system so now if we reopen AJA, go to the target disk drop down, there is our T drive. Now we're going to be performing a 1 gigabyte test file of 1080p quality. We're going to make sure that disk caching isn't enabled and we're going to go ahead and click OK and start the test. Now the ramp up speeds on AJA can sometimes spike early doors, but we're already seeing speeds here of approximately 300 or so read and write. Now, the read speed is typically always going to be higher than the write. It's worth also highlighting that we are taking advantage of that 10 GBE card on the QNAP NAS, as well as utilizing the QNAP 10 GBE to Thunderbolt adapter. There's lots of equipment being used, so we can run these tests today. But these are the speeds from our two enterprise grade hard drives in that RAID 1 environment. So next, let's move over to Blackmagic. In Blackmagic, it's pretty much the same affair. We've already mapped that network drive in advance, so we can scroll down, find the T drive and click OK. Then click Start for our 1 gig test file. And again, Blackmagic is giving us in the heights of 300 in terms of read and in write we're seeing a bounce there of around 260 to 300. Blackmagic speed test is generally more um, adept at noticing the larger file type speeds that we see so this is a good example of that and also a great example of the speed you can get from a couple of enterprise hard drives in a RAID 1 environment. So I think this is enough for us now let's move on to the next stage of the test. We're going to move over to those SSDs. We're going to open the Snapshot Storage Manager. We're then going to go into the Storage and Snapshots, and we're going to create a storage pool that utilizes those SSDs. We click Create, go to New Storage Pool. We're not going to be using Qt here because we are just using the SSDs in question, and these are NVMe grade SSDs. We're going to assign both of them into a RAID 1 environment from there. And then from that RAID 1 environment, we're not going to enable SSD provisioning, over provisioning, and we're not going to enable alerts. What we're going to do now is allow the system to create our RAID 1 utilizing those NVMe SSDs. Once again, I do apologize for any background noise during the course of this video. This is not my typical recording environment, and that is reflective here in the sound. We've created our storage ball, and now we need a volume. This volume is what we're going to be utilizing in order to create our speed tests. As you can see, the pool volume 1 
is the one that's already being allocated. We need to use full volume two that we've just created for our test. We're gonna go ahead, set it to max, and then run for the default volumes. Remember, we are gonna be wiping this area out later to be utilized in caching. Now, volume two, as you can see, is now being created in the background. If we open it up, we can see that the format is taking place and the volume has been created. It's the whole area of RAID 1 on those NVMe SSDs. So next, we'll reopen the file station application and from there, create a shared folder, which we can then utilize for our volume. There's data volume 2 there. And from there, we want to create that new shared folder. We're going to call this one NVMe SSD Share. I know, super imaginative, right? This shared folder is what uh, Blackmagic and AJA is going to be utilizing, and those beeps in the background tell us that the system has taken what we've requested, and it's actioning that right now. That beeping will tell us that things are complete, and from there, we'll be able to go into QFinder. If we're lucky, QFinder will have already found these mapped drives. If we select the Map Network Drive option again, we can see the NVMe SSD share folder we've created. We're from there going to give it a letter and we're going to give it the letter S. I know, super imaginative. We've now assigned our map network drive and from there we're going to re-perform the test that we've just done. And from here we're going to go with AJA first for our test. We're going to go to the drop down, find drive S and perform exactly the same test again. So straight away, we are getting over 600 megabytes per second right to in the heights as well, but the read volumes seem a little lower. Now there are certain reasons for this to do with MTU support. It can be that the network interface port and jumbo frame has not been opened up to the level that we would like. So before we go any further, it is probably worth us checking that out. Additionally, because we're using screen recording software, this can often affect the read speed, and particularly on a system like this that's utilizing a fairly commercial grade SSD, this will always play its part. 10 GBE is still opened up very well here, and we're still seeing speeds in the right department that are exceptionally high. But don't trust those read speeds too much, because they are being somewhat hobbled by the environment thus far. So if we come out of AJA and I quickly switch into the network interface connections, we can take a look at the connection we've created. There is the connected device, our 10 GBE to Thunderbolt 3 adapter. We're then going to go to configure, go to advanced and find the option jumbo packet. As we can see, it has already been switched to 9000 on the PC. But if we go into the NAS, we can have a look at its own storage and virtual switch management. And from here, we'll be able to get more information about what the jumbo packets are on this connection. As we can see, the adapter 3 is connected and there is our NVMe and 10 GBE card working at 10 GBE. If we scroll down and go to the configure option, we can make a switch to the jumbo frame and from here, switch that to 9000. It's now going to restart the network connection, so we may lose the connection for a brief period of time. And from there, we'll redo the test on AJA to make sure if there's any difference in performance with the MTU opened up to 9000. So now we're going to close Blackmagic and reopen AJA. Again, make sure we've selected the correct drive, like so. Drop down, S drive, and click Start. Now the write speed is still high, but as you can already see, the read speed is better. We're still being bottlenecked by my SATA internal SSD, and quite prevalently obvious there, given that the read speed is sitting at around 480 and bottlenecking no higher. It is hitting that wall of my internal SSD. So today I want you to really focus on those write speeds from the SSDs on that card. Also, let's take a moment to appreciate that this is a shared card that's got two NVMe SSDs and the 10 GBE connection all running through a single PCIe slot on this NAS, a PCIe Gen 2 times 4 that allows us to have up to 2000 megabytes per second transmission, but that is being shared by both the 10 GBE and the NVMe's. Next, we'll move over to Blackmagic for the second stage of the testing, and we'll make sure that we select that new drive, the S drive there. 
and then we're going to go ahead and begin the black magic stage of testing now these are quite a short test and what you find with black magic is there's a certain degree of ramp up as you can see the speeds are going from 200 to 350 to 400 and growing we're not seeing the NVMe SSD speeds that you might like, and these are PCIe SSDs that are generally capable of hitting some quite extraordinary speeds in the thousands. But there's no avoiding the fact that the shared combination of that PCIe slot with its NVMe and the 10 GBE network interface is being a little bit throttled there on this NAS because of the PCIe slot. And with this card being of a higher density of PCIe connectivity, this will always play its part. So for the final stage of our testing, what we're going to be doing is now deleting the NVMe area we've created, and then we're going to use those same areas for caching. So we've got our pool there of the SSDs, and from there, we're now going to remove this SSD pool. This will completely delete the SSD area of volume and storage. It will remove it from utilization and then it will allow us to assign these SSDs into cache. So let's go ahead and delete it. It looks like we've got the password in there. Delete there. And now it's removing the SSD portion of the storage pool and the volume we've built on top of it. And from there, we're going to make our way into this area here known as cache acceleration. This is going to allow us to create an area of SSD super fast cache that will work in conjunction with our RAID 1 environment with hard drives to see the performance difference. Now, the bottleneck that we've been seeing is still going to be present in the background. However, when we're interacting with the NAS in our third test, we will be largely dealing with the hard drives, with the SSDs working within the system environment to buffer and assist the hard drives to give us better internal speeds. And with the hope that the speeds we're going to see now are going to be better by a good 10 to 15% than the hard drive only RAID that we've used, but still not quite hitting the heights of the SSD performance in test two. So let's fast forward to the completion of the deletion of that pool, or in fact, let's do it now, because it looks like it's just finished. Next, we go to the cache acceleration option and click the plus button. From there, it will invite us to use SSD cache, explaining in detail the IO implications and improvements that they present. It will ask us to select the SSDs like so and which kind of caching environment we want. I'm going to utilize a read-write cache, ultimately a RAID 1 that allows you to have improvements in read and write operations. From there, we're going to leave SSD, cache, uh, SSD over provisioning to be enabled and then click next. It's asking us to select the hard drive volume that we're going to be connecting this caching with and there is our large scale storage pool that utilizes those hard drives. From there we click create and it's letting us know that the data will be deleted. Not a problem, we've already wiped it. So as you can see, it's now initializing our SSD caching area of the TS253BE. It's now enabled and we're gonna be able to see the hit rate there in the background. Let's leave that on screen during the next section of the testing. Now, luckily, we've still got the files and folders that we utilized earlier in test one. But as you can see, this lightning symbol has appeared to let us know that the caching acceleration can begin. If we carry on and now make our way into AJA, from AJA, we drop down and go back to shared folder T. And from here, make sure we're ready to go and click start. Now, what you're going to notice during these testing, based on what we've seen previously with SSD caching um, improvements, is you won't see the speed benefits immediately. It's a gradual process as the caching identifies what's going to be hit and where it needs to cache. And you will see speed gradually improve as it's utilized. Now, outside of a standard testing environment, this is going to be very hard to show because a test environment is far more randomized than that of the regular read-write operations that you may perform in your own home or business environment. We are seeing a gradual growth in performance of write and read across both of them, and we're certainly seeing read performance of those two hard drives. 
Now the read performance is very, very important because if you are utilizing the same files for business, maybe it's for OSs, maybe it's client data, having two hard drives that formerly were giving a speed somewhere in the region of 300, now hitting closer to 500 meg, likely being bottlenecked by my internal SSD, is certainly something to write home about. The write performance hasn't improved as much, but a lot of that can be put down to the slightly more randomized element that the test using AJA on this system provides. So let's click stop and now go into the final stage of our testing. We're going to go back into AJA, we're going to use that one gigabyte test file, and we're going to make our way into the test folder that we've used thus far, T. Click OK, and we're going to begin our testing. Now, while this is running the test, let's take a moment to leave the SSD caching window open. Let's see the QNAP NAS actually utilize the caching and show us how and when it's getting hit. We're seeing write speeds there of approximately the same, but we are dealing with larger, more randomized files. The read speed is still maxing at 480 to 490, which for two hard drives is genuinely breathtaking. But unfortunately, we won't really know how high it can get due to the slight bottlenecking of my internal SSD and, of course, utilizing screen recording software Open Broadcast. But I think we can largely end things here, and this has been the performance differences between using hard drives, SSD, and SSD caching with that brand new QM2 card of the series and the brand new QNAP TS253D. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video, I know I have, and it's always great to find out just what these cards can and cannot do. If you're interested in learning more, do click subscribe. If you have enjoyed this video, click like, and if you are interested in getting a hold of your own NAS system, why not contact SPAN, the NAS experts. 25 years in the biz, they know what they are doing. I'll see you next time.